In this tutorial, we're going to cover getting started in V-Ray, the plugin for Rhino. Um, there's a number of other software that it will um, function within, and we're going to show today how to set up a pretty much basic rendering um, using V-Ray. And we're going to talk about setting up lighting. We're going to use an HDRI image for the lighting. We're going to talk about setting up a camera and the views associated with it. And we're going to talk about materiality and assigning materials to various objects. So I have a Rhino model that I've, I've worked on. I'm going to use this as the example here. And this is going to be, um, again, a beginner tutorial into V-Ray. And we're going to cover... Um, all the topics that I just mentioned. So when you load V-Ray, it'll come in as a toolbar like this. Um, you'll have to go into Render, Current Renderer, and set this to V-Ray. That'll be the first thing you do. It may still be set to the default Rhino Renderer. Um, so set your current render to V-Ray for Rhino. And if we were to... Um, kind of go over each of these. Uh, the first is the asset editor. This is the kind of brains of V-Ray. This has all of the different ways to modify materials, lighting, objects, uh, different elements, and then settings here too. So all of these settings are drop-down based. So there's drop-downs, and then you can expand this window on the right to give you more options as well. So these are all, um, each, each tab can be expanded. So there's a lot of terminology that V-Ray uses that can be overwhelming for uh, an entry level uh, render, um, but it is uh, one of the better rendering engines for creating realistic renderings um, that's out there. So. V-Ray now gives you the option of rendering on your CPU or rendering with your graphics card. So we can specify that later, um, but graphics card renderers are faster but less accurate. Rendering on your CPU um, is more time consuming but is a, a more accurate uh, rendering in terms of lighting quality and um, in terms of the image output. Uh, V-Ray now also gives you the option to either render in real time uh, to do a interactive rendering where it'll create a, a frame buffer that is uh, based on your current view. And then as you toggle your view, the render will update as well. So when, when it has this hand, that just means that it's interactive. If you were to click this arrow, you can set this to render with V-Ray in, in the more traditional sense where it would just do a one-time rendering and won't update with your scene changes. Okay, so that's a relatively new feature and it's one that helps V-Ray compete with some of the other real-time render engines out there. On the right, this is the frame buffer. So this is what we would see when we, we run the rendering. Um, moving to the right, this is Chaos Cosmos. So this is uh, V-Ray's um, database for people, HDRIs. Um, so this gives you a series of background images that are really nice that you can download. Um, we'll use some of those today. Um, there's furniture, uh, landscape elements, all of those to, that you can download. So those are all options, furniture, vegetation, accessories, people, all those can be downloaded here under the Chaos Cosmos browser. This next one is the interactive render. So when we're ready to render, we can hit that or we can set this to more of a final render here. Uh, there's other render options. You can render in the cloud now. Um, you know, there's V-Ray Vision, so vision is another um, new feature that, that allows 
V-Ray to output a number of different schemes. So you can have a number of different lighting schemes and, and look at them, uh, look at the whole matrix of options at once. Um, so light gen, this is uh, similar to that. So it, it's able to come up with a number of different lighting scenarios that you can choose from. You can choose the, the kind of quality that you want. There's different types of lighting. So V-Ray has its own lighting that you can add. Similar to Rhino, there's uh, rectangular light, sphere light, spotlight, uh, IES. There's a point light, similar to Rhino. Um, and a dome light. We're going to look at a dome light today and because we're going to actually map an image to that dome light. So this HDRI that we import, we're going to use that to create the lighting in the scene. So imagine a giant dome over our model and that dome isn't just uh, a consistent color, it's actually uh, an image with a lot of lighting information. And that lighting is what's going to create our reflections in the glass. It's going to create our shadows. It's going to really determine how our model uh, shows up. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, some other toolbars on here. Infinite Plane is, is one I like to use. So if we click on that, it just creates an infinite plane in every direction at our C plane. Okay, so that's... That's something that we can show here. I'll leave that turned on. And then there's other, you know, you can add fur or hair to the model, um, clipping plane, displacement, and camera focus can, can all be set here. So uh, we're not gonna go into all of that. We're just gonna talk about the basics of setting up a scene. So we've just created an infinite plane at, at, at zero at the C plane. We can move this, obviously. We'll leave it where it is for now. Um, the first thing we want to do is just see what kind of rendering we're looking at just off the bat. So if we were to hit start interactive render, you'll see that I've already started um, adding some materials to this. We'll change those materials in a second, but um, you're seeing the, the, the default render with, again, it's, it's a V-Ray rendering, but it's using this uh, studio lighting. So it's kind of a, a soft white light. So the first thing we want to do is make sure all of our lighting is turned off so that we can add uh, the, the dome light and have it be the only light that's in the scene because we want to control what's affecting our project. We don't want this additional light. So you'll see that there's a, a render icon. The teapot is kind of the universal sign for, for rendering. So. Whenever you see that, you'll know that that refers to uh, start rendering. So there's a stop button on this, so it's continuing to render. I'm gonna hit stop, so it stops. Um, I could hit start again if I wanted to keep rendering this or do a full uh, V-Ray render here. So I'm gonna close this. This is just the, the sample. Actually, one thing we can show here, if I hit play, so now we're rendering live. As I rotate this, my render will update in real time. So this is a nice uh, option for real time rendering if you wanna test different materials and kind of see their updates in real time. This can be an effective tool. So I'll hit stop, close that. So that showed me that there is still lighting in the scene. We want to turn off all the lighting so that we just, when we hit render, it's just going to be a black image, no light at all. So some things that we can do. Uh, first, we want to go, if you go to, uh, Rhino has its own render tools here. We can go to toggle environments panel. We can make sure that the studio lighting is deleted. I'm going to select select it, hit delete on my keyboard, hit delete. So that's no longer affecting this. A couple other places where there might be lighting, if I go to my asset editor, I can go to lights. 
by default there's a rhino document sun i don't want that so i'm going to set this to zero so that's going to be gone the other place that uh, other lighting source that will affect the scene is under settings so i can go to settings environment and under background i can turn this off as well so i'm going to uncheck background okay so now when i do this rendering I should just end up with a black screen. So there's no light in this, nothing for it to hit. So it's just gonna show up as black. So that's what we want. That's our starting point here. Close. So what we wanna do, the first thing <clears throat> we're gonna affect is, is adding this HDRI. So we can go into Chaos Cosmos. We can download an HDRI here so if there's one that we like, and it's nice because it's showing you the the background, but it's also showing you how it affects different materials in the scene. So these are all sunset. Let's choose a day. Um, it's nice to have an HDRI with uh, a sun. So there is a sun here. It's just going to choose the brightest spot on the, on the image and, and make that the sun. So that's going to be the direction that light is coming from. These are all pretty good. Um, you can see the different lighting qualities here. So I'm going to download this one. So that's importing. Um, the other way to do this Now this is available. So you see the green, that blue check indicates that it's available. Um, close this. The other way to do this is to download your HDRI from a website. So this could be um, any website. You can purchase it or you can, um, in this case, just download it for free. So these are all HDRI images. They have a lot of, uh, HDRI is high dynamic range. Um, image and it has lighting uh, embedded in the image so there's a lot more information in an HDRI than there would be with a typical image so this website polyhaven.com slash HDRIs this is a good one uh, so you can download either a 4k or 8k if your computer is running really slow then maybe 2k um, but you can download any of these images for free um, so I would download maybe a 4K or 8K version of this. It's good to choose an image with uh, a high... You want a sun, that's important, so that it creates a shadow in your scene. Um, and depending on the background, you want something that will wouldn't won't have a lot of you know buildings in the background so that it shows up in, in your scene. So you can download one of these. Once that's downloaded and you have an HDRI, you can go to uh, Dome Light. So in under the V-Ray tab, this is one of those V-Ray tabs that'll load when you first open uh, V-Ray after downloading it. So you can click on Dome Light, and it's going to ask us where we want it. This doesn't really matter. We can place this anywhere. I'm going to click here. Um, and so I want to give this a light texture. So this is asking us to load our HDRI that we downloaded. I'm going to use this one. It's an 8K image. So I just assigned a dome light. You can see the, the direction that the sun is operating here. Um, so let's just look at what we have so far. So there is now a dome light that's affecting this. Um, so we do have some lighting. Notice the sun is in the back here, so it's backlighting our model. It's creating some shadow, which is nice. It's a little dark, so we'll show you how to how to affect that, how to change the materials later. But first, we want to set this lighting scenario so that it's something we want. So I can keep this minimized here and open up the asset editor. So from here, we can actually affect that light. So now when we go to lights, 
you'll see that this dome light we created is now something we can play with. We can now change this. So I select it. If I click on this arrow to the right, that expands the um, options for us. And you're seeing a representation of that uh, rendering. So this is just an example showing how the lighting affects the model. Um, so there's a lot we can do within this. Um, there's first the intensity. So we can change uh, how intense we want our HDRI to be. So that can either brighten or darken the scene. Um, we can change the, if we click on this image itself, this is the texture, so we can click on that. Here we can change the, this is uh, going to let us change uh, how how bright the, the image is, so we can lighten this up a little bit. So if I change this from linear to gamma curve, this gives me the ability to play with this slider. So notice how pulling this to 0.7 just increase the contrast considerably. Okay, so if I make it larger, that increases the contrast. If I bring this down, that's going to decrease the contrast. Um, so now you're seeing 0.2. Um, the other thing we want to affect here is um, under again, the intensity. So we can go back to that. I think we, we upped the intensity to 1.7. That's a little high. Let's bring this down to just one. And then going back to this, we can play with the gamma. So toggling between the two of those, between the gamma and the intensity, find, find a lighting uh, scenario that, that works for the image. Um, you know, it's going to do some different things depending on the image. So here it's a little dark. One thing we can do, it's, it's also being backlit, so that's uh, partly why this is so dark. So if we go to texture placement, we can actually rotate this background so that the sun is no longer behind our model, it's in front. So we can change this under rotate H, we can rotate it horizontally. And now the background will change and the lighting scenario is a little different here too because our sun is also moving. So toggle this until it gives you something with uh, some shadow and it gets the contrast that we want. Rotate V is rotate vertically, so it would actually rotate, um, you know, in the other direction. So. That's all, that's not really what we want here, but this is getting better. Um, we can try this. So our sun is clearly kind of behind us now, so we're seeing some shadow and seeing some highlights. Too far. So play with that until it um, gives you something that is uh, has a high contrast. So here we're seeing some shadow. Um, we can go back to the gamma, play with this a little bit. So again, too high of a contrast. Let's set this to 0 0.9, see how that changes. So this is much better. So we're seeing, uh, you know, you don't we don't see the washed out spotlights anymore. We're seeing some shadow, so this is much better. 
Um, textures are still off and completely, you know, we'll, we'll work on that. But we've now manipulated the gamma, kept the intensity at one, and showed how to rotate the, the image in the background to create an, an HDRI image. So this model is being lit by the, the HDRI that's in the background. And again, we have this interactive render turned on. So as I make changes here, you're seeing them on the left. And as we toggle in Rhino, you can actually see the view change. Okay, so we've just affected our lighting. So the, the three kind of big categories in, in, in any rendering strategy are, are lighting, camera, and materials. Changing those three things affects the, the quality of our image and helps tell our story, whatever it is. So the first thing we've done is set the lighting. This is using an HDRI. We can add other lights to it. If we wanted to add point lights, we could embed those in the model, all using uh, the lighting up here in this panel. As we add them, they'll populate here under this lighting tab. You'll see new lights show up here. You can change the intensity of those lights. Um, we're not going to go too far into that today, but um, just realize that those are there. They're available. But what we did is we blacked out the scene and only did this HDRI dome light. Okay, so that's the lighting. We can stop this interactive render, let the PC rest. I can close this. And what we want to do next is set a view that we like. So in Rhino, you can, you can do that under lens length. So in terms of setting the lens length, if you right click on your toolbar, say show toolbar, you scroll down to lens length, and add this. This is a good one to have in your toolbar. Um, so this lets us change the size of our, our lens. So whether it's 25, 50, 17, if we want something that's um, sharper. So choose a view that you like. In this case, we're going to go ground level. Um, when we're happy with the scene, we can go into Named Views and save it. I've done this a few times, so this shows up in my toolbar. If it doesn't, I can right-click here, go to Set View, click on Named Views. Mine shows up already. Yours will show up like this, and then you can hit Save. I'll call this V-Ray Render. And so now I'm going to dock the tab. So now if I manipulate the model and I move around, I can double click on this and go back to this view. So once that's saved, um, I can continue modeling or changing the project and always have that. Um, I want to add people to this. So I'm going to go back to my Chaos Cosmos, go home, I'm going to add people. So if I want to add this couple, click on that, and I can just drop this into the scene. So the blue check marks are the ones that I've previously downloaded. So those load quickly. Otherwise, it'll download, take a second. So eye level views, we want them to be at eye level. So we'll bring this view down a little bit. I'll right click or I'll uh, save this as this so that it overrides that previous view. So once I've dropped some people in this view, rotate some of these, create a little bit of variation and go back to my view by double clicking on it. And 
you know, there, there's more entourage we can add in this. Again, people, cars, uh, landscape. But for now, this is what we're going to do. Um, uh, so once we've added people, the next step uh, we want to do is manipulate the materials in the scene. So we're going to go to our asset editor again. And you're seeing under geometry now here that all of those uh, people that we loaded are now showing up here. So there, there are things we can edit within that. We'll go deep into this. What we're interested in now uh, in is materials. So there's a, an expansion tab on the left. We can expand this. And we can see that there's a list of materials. You may have to download uh, these materials first, but the first time you open this, there will be an option to download it from online. So hit download, and it'll load all of these preset V-Ray materials. So you'll be able to work immediately in, in, in your scene without creating these yourself, which is very helpful. So all of these materials will load. We can also create a material this way by clicking on the Material tab. Um, what we're going to do is show that each layer here in Rhino is assigned to a material. So again, we're going to render this and just see where we are in terms of progress. So this is the scene that we currently have. Um, lighting is OK, um, a little dark still, but um, showing how people are rendered. The ground plane is uh, this oversized texture that has to be changed to the correct scale, maybe give it an asphalt material. We have to add glass to this and a concrete material for everything else. So those are some things we're going to work on. I'm going to close this. Each layer is given a different material. So the ground plane and the, this geometry are both on the same uh, layer. So that's why they're showing up as the same material here. Um, and then glass is on its own layer here. So that can be turned on and off. So the way we can we can do this, so when you click on the material here, it's going to give you the kind of Rhino options. So these are materials that we've loaded into Rhino or we've created in Rhino. But the way to uh, assign this so once we've chosen, so here we have concrete. Let's say we have concrete flooring, two meters. Click on that. Um, if you right click it, you can uh, add to scene so that it's now an option that we can drop into that layer. Or we can select this in Rhino and then say apply to selection. So if we only want it to show up in that selection, we can do this. If we want it to add to the whole layer, we can use this. So let's do this, add to scene. So now under materials, there is a new material here. So this is the, the first V-Ray material we're loading. And it's called Concrete Flooring H01. So I can go back to my concrete layer and I can now change this from our drop down. to Concrete Flooring H01. And it recognizes that it's a V-Ray material. And I can hit OK. So now when I render the scene, it's going to use V-Ray's material, which these are high quality materials. They have reflections, which you can still modify. You can change all of this. The glossiness of the reflection, the index of refraction, the IOR. So if this were water or glass, you could play with that. Um, 
I think water is 1.33 for that. So there's ways that you can, you know, manipulate your material. You can give it a bump, so give it some three-dimensional texture. Um, so yeah, that's all here, but we've now assigned it to this layer. So we also want to give this a glass material. So under glass, we have different types. So there's coated glass, crystal, they have a they have, you know, different types of coatings and tints. This is just a neutral glass window. This is what we want. So we're going to select this. We're then going to select our glass in Rhino. And we're going to right click, add to selection. And apply that to this selection. So now if I were to close this and I select this, you'll see under material properties, you'll see that this is given a glass window neutral. So that's the glass that we want. It doesn't have any uh, frosting to it, so it makes it uh, easier to uh, see lighting and things beyond the glass. So that, let's just go back to our view and take a look at what we have so far. So adding materials like this to the ground, uh, this is one of the asphalt textures. And uh, we just created a glass for this, so this is rendering correctly. Uh, we wanna add some lights on the interior. So I'm gonna hit stop. So we wanna give this some lighting from the interior. So I can go to point light tool, click on that. Select this. I'm going to raise this up. If I had a, a light source, like an actual light, I could um, either change the material to be an emissive material, so the material itself emits light, um, or more simply, if I just want to I'm just holding Alt to duplicate these. If I just want to create a kind of lighting scene, I can do this. Then if I want to duplicate these to the next level, I hold Alt again, lifting these up so that this whole area will be illuminated. All right, then if I go into my well, first let's look at this. So I can go back here, look at the scene. So you're seeing some of the interior now. Because of those point lights, we're getting a reading of what's happening on the interior. It's a very white light. Um, we can make this a little warmer if we want. So we can hit stop. If we go to the asset editor, click on Omni Light. This is the new light that we just added. So we can change all of them at once. We can change the color. We can make this a little warmer here or cooler if you like, but we like our, our interiors to be warm and inviting. We can change the intensity here. So we can set this to 150, so be a little brighter, or maybe 200. And then we can see this changing our scene too. So you'll see this go from more of a cold light to kind of a warmer light in there. You'll get some reading of the interior. Okay, so that's adding point lights. We added a dome light that's lighting the scene and we rotated it around to create the shadow and, and lighting scenario that we like. All right, thanks for watching.